Hi guys, welcome back to Sparky Face 5. Um, today I have a Joy-Con that sometimes has a drifting issue. And let's see if the, we can do it on camera here at the moment. As always, these things don't like to show themselves when they're being filmed. <laughs> there we go. See how slow to return? It's not going back into the middle like it should be. Sometimes it also just creeps up on its own. Anyway, so that's the problem. And today I'm going to fix it by replacing the thumbstick module in the Joy-Con. Hopefully. Alrighty. So, first of all, there's four screws. One, two, three, four. And they are the tri-wing or the Y zero zero and they hold the outer case together If it just clicks off, we can get our get a bit of a purchase somewhere. There we go. And then there's two ribbon cables here. But first to move the battery out of the way. has a little bit of adhesive tape here and here. I'm not sure if you can catch the reflection on the camera. But um, don't be afraid to pull up on the battery a little bit. The insides are all Phillips 00. And this battery holder, uh, it looks like it's held on by five screws, but it's actually only held on by three but we have access to two that are underneath. So I'm just going to undo the three. One, two, three. And then peel this one up this way. And there's a little ribbon cable here. So let's have a look a bit more close up. Turn the lights on. Right, so this little ribbon cable is for the shoulder button. And these two, this one and this one uh, for the buttons that are on the outside and I'll have to remove at a bare minimum undo this one and this one here because this ribbon cable uh, for the other shoulder button goes over where the screw is for the thumb stick So I'm just going to undo those now to make sure you unclip the um, there's a little clip for the ribbon cables so make sure you unclip that before pulling any out otherwise you could damage the, the cable and the connector I'm just going to undo the one for the for the thumb stick Now 
Now the thumbstick is held on by two screws, one here and one there, just in the opposite corners. The hardest part about this repair is plugging all the ribbon cables in again at the end, I reckon. Oh, and try not to push that trigger out because there's a spring there that we could easily lose. There we go. A tiny little spring here. And there, see that there's in the middle there, there's a little pillar that the spring goes onto. And push it on so we don't lose it. Gently um, pulling the thumb stick out now. There we go. And where's my new one? Oh, there we go. So here's the original one. It has a blue cable. That's pretty much the only difference. My new one has a green cable. It's brown on the back. The original is blue on the back. Um, my original thumbstick feels a bit stiffer than the new one. The new one is a, it's not sloppy, but it's easier to push around. And I just bought a cheap kit from Amazon, so I'm not sure if there's different um, quality of thumbsticks out there. Maybe maybe you guys can tell me if you know. Are uh, all thumbsticks created equal or not? So putting it back together together, I'm going to Put this screw in first because it's the easiest, there's nothing in the way. And then very carefully make sure that I don't screw onto the ribbon cable. Okay, now for tricky bits. I wonder if the microscope might help us here. So the locking mechanism is up. You just got to try and slide it in there. Let's use my big fingers. Alrighty. I think that's in. All right, now for this one. Okay, now for the shoulder button with the spring, the spring goes against this post here. We also have to get it all in. So we just put the end with the spring in first. 
and then lever it up a little and over. Nope, try again. There we go. Click, click, click. That looks good. Okay. Then this one, oh, I'm just completely in the way there. This one sort of twists around too, so it's a bit confusing. But it goes with the shiny contacts facing up into this connector here. So that's that, that's um, that ribbon cable back plugged in and then we carefully fold it around. So this is just the reverse of what we did to take it apart. in together and hold that shoulder button in place. Now the three screws that hold the battery cover on. One screw. Two screws. Lucky last. Excellent. Now you probably should remove the battery, but I didn't want to play with the plug to be honest. And then when we fold this bit over, we have to be careful that the ribbon cables fold in and not out because we don't want them to get damaged closing the case on top of them. There we go, that's all together. Put our outside screws back on and then we'll test it. I keep forgetting, these ones aren't magnetic. The outside screws are not magnetic, which I'm so used to them being magnetic that it becomes a bit painful. <laughs> oh well. I like it when the screws are magnetic because then the end of the screwdriver can pick them up and also helps to guide them in the hole. Whereas when they're not magnetic, I have to try and get them in there first and then hold it in place. But that's okay. Alrighty. Okay, let's test it. Let's see. Up. Looks good to me. Okay, let's find out the uh, what do we need to do to test the buttons. Button mapping. 
That doesn't seem right. Um, test input devices. There we go, test controller buttons. So joystick. Oh, I took a capture of the screen. So the bottom shoulder, top shoulder. That button there and this button. Yep, so they're all working. Fantastic, we fixed it. There we go. Now I can play my games without my character drifting off in weird directions when I want them to be standing still. I hope you enjoyed watching the Joy-Con get disassembled and I will see you next time. Bye!